Hey guys, welcome to episode one of Hanjo Talks, where it is going to be a perfectly normal podcast that you completely expected. Oh wait, surprise, it's a double podcast. We're going to be watching back this recording of me talking together. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I figured I'd do a little talk about things. It's a podcast. So the most recent thing that I can think of to talk about is a recent realization that I had, which was kind of like, uh, present moment, it's like not conceptual. But the first part of that is there, there's a present moment and the present moment is like always in operation. There's no, there's no time that isn't the present moment. Everything's always the present moment. Um, and the second part of that is the present moment isn't conceptual. So what I'm talking about is kind of like, it's kind of encompassing everything at once. It's like, obviously, obviously there's always a present moment. Um, and there's nothing else. That's always what's going on. You're never like in the future. You're always now. You're never in the past either. You're always now. Um, and it's kind of like, first of all, noticing that that's the case. It's like, oh, that's the only thing that's happening. Um, that's like step one. And then step two is like that thing that's always happening. You actually can't grasp it intellectually. It's like too fast. It's too, it's moving too quickly and it's not, it's just too much information. So like intellectual grasping actually ends up um, just being wasted energy. So it's kind of like um, sort of noticing that there's always this non-conceptual existence that's like always present. And sort of any any sort of attempt to grasp or capture or intellectualize sort of what's going on um, is a sort of a post hoc analysis. You know, like it's an analyzing something which has already happened uh, and is happening non conceptually. It's kind of like most people think that the, when they're intellectually thinking through stuff and like they're understanding things that's the present moment but that's not the present moment the present moment is actually this non-conceptual thing and it's also just like capturing a very small part of it so it's like capturing a small part of it and then uh you know creating a story about it the story narrative the same thing i was talking about before it's something that i've kind of like um it's been sort of a struggle for a long time to same with everyone, right? So to kind of a capture or solve problems. It's like, oh, I've got a problem. Like I need to do some work. Okay, let's capture the present moment in a, in a concept. <laughs> like what's the situation, what's happening? And then, um, okay, uh, I'm like tired and there's like energy in my hips. Uh, this is just... So what I'm doing here is I'm explaining how I used to operate before I noticed that the present moment was called non-conceptual. And that was like trying to live life through this sort of intellectual story about the present moment. Um, and it's like this, my story is that there's energy in my hips and uh, I want to do work. That's what happens to me. Energy in my knees. And it, like, it seems like it's difficult for me to do some work when these are active. So maybe I should calm them down or something. Um, is kind of a example of what it means to like intellectualize the present moment um but the problem is if you do that you're all you're doing is just filtering out like 99.99999 percent of information to focus on thoughts at the at the time like you're not actually capturing the present moment you're not actually in the present moment you're just trying to capture it so you got you got like a distribution of attention all the time like what what are you putting your attention on what aren't you putting your attention on um and it's like you can put your attention on this non-conceptual present moment that's always happening or you can put your attention on this sort of story or understanding or narrative that's going on about the present moment um and what i'm saying here is like you don't actually need to do the narrative thing it's like the non-conceptual present moment has its own momentum that you can just be in you don't have to think about it. And this is just coming off like, um, like a few days before I shifted into having like no thoughts all the time. 
at least 90% of the time. Yeah, I was walking to, walking to Subway earlier. Just giving a timeline, like, three days before I recorded this, no thoughts, and then had non-conceptual present moment, was walking to Subway earlier, and I was, like, thinking, I was like, oh, I fancy this is going to be nice. And I was walking back, and I was like, I'm going to do some do some work. I'm giving examples of no thoughts. It's like, there are thoughts, but, you know, there's very occasional thoughts. Those are the occasional thoughts that I have sometimes. Um, but, yeah, it's very, they're very... They're very not the central thing anymore for me. Like it's always sort of this sort of like non-conceptual uh, present moment, which is always happening. And just uh, just recently, just earlier, I was chatting with my partner Jess. She's beautiful. I love her. Sisica three thousand three on Twitter. And I've always followed this sort of a bit of bit of advice from Miyamoto Musashi, which was um, once you attain a principle, detach from it. And I was like, oh, I don't think I've detached from this whole like non-conceptual present moment yet. So I detached from that. This was in the call with Jess. I was like uh, chatting with her, and then I was like, whoa, wait a minute, like this advice detach detach from. Uh, once you attain a principle detached from it, it's like I'm not using that advice right now. And detachment is kind of, um... You're... Noticing... That something's happened. And then you're eliminating mental objectification of what's happened. So, the earlier that you do it, <laughs> the easier it is to detach from it. And that's really important. It's like, if you can... Detach from a principle as soon as you attain it. Like, that's really good because you're not giving it any time to solidify into a conceptual structure. And that's something that I've, like, always done. Um, so that's just me. I'm just telling you about how good it is to detach from a principle as soon as you attain it. And it's like the longer the longer you wait to detach from it, um, it's like the more it solidifies into a thing and then you get thinking about it, it gets conceptual, it gets embedded in your body. It's like, uh, just fucking detach from it immediately. Ever since I read this bit of advice, it's like, as soon as I, I you know, because for me, I like three to 10 times per day, I go through like a huge shift like this, like I'm talking about where it's like, oh, the present moment is non-conceptual. Um, you know, s scale isn't a thing. It's like, this is, this looks as big as this. Give me an example of, of the kind of things that I go through three to ten times per day. It's like all of a sudden scale is not a thing. I was about to say this looks as big as this because I don't understand scale anymore. And I thought that would be a good example of the same size. Where like distance collapses, it's like everything looks the same distance away, you know. Not visually, but like in terms of perceptual felt sense. Which is a difficult thing to explain. Um, and pretty much all of my changes are perceptual perceptual felt sense sometimes i get psychedelic visuals actually quite often so so just about the felt sense thing it's like um everything for me is like full perception it's like your perception i don't know how to put this is your, per your perception of things it's like you the whole thing the whole thing at once that's what i mean by perceptual felt sense that's kind of a I was kind of like annoyed. I was like, ah, oh, my, 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 my perception's a little bit too ordinary. This is a bit annoying. This is why I got psychedelic visuals. This was my, like, the reason that I started pursuing it was because I thought that. It's like, I'd, I'd prefer if there was something kind of interesting going on perceptually for me. So I decided to do some, uh, some sort of intention setting and verbalizing to get more psychedelic visuals. I find it's extremely easy to if you just like figure out what you want in your heart and then put it to words and sort of send that intention out so that it manifests, it does tend to manifest for me. And it was the case uh, here as well. That's actually explaining a very powerful, magical spell that you can do that I don't think many people have the competency to do. And that's fine. That's normal. But it's like thinking through something in your heart and then putting it to words and like that manifests things very quickly for me. So, yeah, I decided to do some um, 
Uh, I call it magic. You have to do some magic for uh, in order to get psychedelic visuals. And what I noticed was that like the more sort of you can dilate time and space, so you can like sort of uh, make make time and space change. Time especially, it's like if you can make like five seconds feel like forty seconds, then it's really easy to get sort of a psychedelic or different experience. Here I'm I'm talking about how how I got these psychedelic visuals and what I was noticing on the lead up to having them all the time. And that was this dilation of time and space. Um, let me just close that. And I was like, oh, so like a pretty, pretty space too, right? So if you can sort of make them go like this, <laughs> then, uh, you know, or make, make like five seconds for like one second. It's easier to have a non-ordinary um sort of like visual field um and it's quite easy to notice this i feel like if you, if you can in your in your day-to-day -day life it's like notice when time passes slowly um but it was a short amount of time and notice when time takes ages to pass but it was a long amount of a short amount of time yeah, that's what I, I don't know why I said, yeah, I fucked it up here. I said before, notice that time takes a long time, a short time to pass when it's a long time. A short time to pass when it's a long time, a long time to pass when it's a short time. Yeah. And then when you notice that, you can kind of key into it as something that is, can be intentional. It's like, oh, it's, uh, you know. Um, I can make time go really fast if I start focusing on sort of a more imaginal subconscious part of myself. Um, so I did some uh, I did some magic to sort of be able to dilate space and time a little bit easier, and that what that looked like was you know I I felt in my heart what it was that I wanted to happen, and then I gave words to it. It was like being able to dilate space and time. And so that's me giving an example of a, a magical spell that I did that I thought through in my heart. It's like, oh, I want to dilate space and time. I'll put that to words and then manifest it. Every time that I do magic like that, it's uh, I get like an energetic like shift feeling in my neck. Like I've switched timelines or something. I'm like, whoa, fuck. Um, I did it some more to get psychedelic visuals. Uh, I was sort of lying in bed initially, just sort of looking up. And I was like, okay, psychedelic visuals. That's another spell. Think it through, psychedelic visuals. And to begin with, um, I kind of had psychedelic, I was able to kind of instigate psychedelic visuals in my perception before, which was by looking in a mirror. So if I looked in a mirror, like stared right in my eyes, it's like all of the lights kind of merged in an interesting way and like change colors. And anyone can do this, I think. You'll get pretty wild visuals if you just look into your own eyes <laughs> in a mirror for like a minute. Um, and then that started happening on like the roof because I was lying in bed. There, looking up my roof. So my roof is kind of um, it's got like a pattern on it. And it, oh, I was like, oh, look, these like visuals which I have like normally come to expect to be like you know my psychedelic visuals. It's like the ones that I'm able to instigate started happening. And I was like, cool, that works. First of all, magic works. Uh, that's cool. So I wasn't super, like, this was when I was first getting into using this magic. And this was one of those things where I was like, okay, like, can I can I make, like, shifts in my, like, body or perception, like, that, how, like, last forever? Can I, like, do that with this magic? Like, how how powerful is this? And then I, I did it to get psychedelic visuals and started being able to have psychedelic visuals I never wanted. And I was like, oh, magic does work. Second of all, can can instigate psychedelic visuals. And I was like, oh, but it's kind of lame that it's um it's kind of lame that it's like the same kind of visuals that I would get from a mirror or something. Like what's up with that? Like I want I want visuals which I would like get on acid or something, or like uh truffles. Like that's or like, you know, non expected visuals, because it's like it's easy to kind of convince yourself that something 
his material material world normie stuff. Like it's like oh yeah, you just learn to to do the mirror thing, but on the roof. What I'm saying is it's it's like is it magic or did you just suddenly like realize you had the ability to see these psychedelic visuals? It's like I'm always very I'm very critical and like trying to understand things. I'm very scientisty. Nearly have a PhD. So just explaining explaining my thought process of like, oh, it's like, oh, I could like, is that real? You didn't do magic. And I was like, ah, uh, it's a convincing argument. That was me to myself. I'm about to say that I just remembered myself. Um, but over time, over the course of like a few weeks, that gradually shifted. And it slowly became like, if I just stare at one spot, it even happens now. But yeah, it's way more pronounced now than normal. It gets really wild now, actually. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, if I just stare at one spot for um, the whole thing, when I, when I when I looked over at my wall, and it's happening now, it's going to happen again. I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I just did. I'm not going to do it. But yeah, if, when I when I look over uh, at it's uh, the walls over there too. It doesn't help. But yeah, when I when I when I sort of um go into those visuals, it's almost like a portal. I feel like I explained this in the video. Actually, you know, if, if, like any <laughs> any amount of time more than like a constantly shifting attentional field um which is like normal life of like flipping between like 100 different tabs on what i'm saying is if if i put my attention on it then it happens that's what i'm saying on social media um if my attention is on social media in like this normal way of just flicking through a bunch of stuff that isn't psychedelic visuals then it doesn't happen which is uh, yeah, yeah makes sense right then psychedelic visuals just start to happen for me now and it's kind of like um you know, op open the door to like always having a kind of psychedelic experience. That magic opened the door. Yeah. And to begin with, it was kind of like the more the more connected to some kind of energetic um, event. So if I was in the middle of one of my daily enlightenment, more enlightenment things, the ones that happen three to ten times per day. Where I was, you know, like space time was changing somehow. Um, then I would all, all of a sudden, you know, I would get, I'd be able to access like a more pronounced psychedelic visual. Um, but that's changed now, and it's it's the most pronounced for me. Um, when I'm sort of going before bed, when I'm like falling asleep, I can kind of just like start getting the visuals like behind my eyes, and then it slowly like morphs into even more complicated like interesting things kind of like on yeah on psychedelics it's like you start seeing you know things that you couldn't ever imagine like uh, and like the face of a an alien goddess uh yeah you know, like a purple mask here <laughs> but it wasn't a mask it was like part of her face i was like that's ultra hd and could never have thought of that um yeah that's sarah sweaty so i have like connections with um so I gave I gave a real example of a goddess that hangs out with me, Sarah Sweaty, uh, as like that's when I like keyed into like what she looks like with like, the psychedelic visuals that I instigated through magic. She looked like yeah, there's like it's almost like a, the aliens of Avatar kind of, but with like a purple like flesh mask here, and I'll stop talking about it with deities. It's kind of a something that I've picked up from Meta Jedi on Twitter. So I'm talking about how I have relationships with deities, um, like gods, goddesses, uh, interfacing with them, and Meta Jedi uh, does a lot of that as well, in some sense. Though I already right. sort of had it. And it's this sort of like ability that I've had for a long time, which is sort of um, connecting energetically with things, and then absorbing uh, energy from them. Um, that's sort of a generalized term. So I'm saying that the way that I interface with these deities and goddesses is through this energetic connection ability, which I have for what's going on. Uh, who knows what? was I connecting energetically with things and then absorbing uh, energy from them. Um, that's sort of a generalized term for what's going on. Uh, who knows what's actually happening? Um, I imagine, I, th I I feel like sort of energy is kind of a, like, catch-all. It's kind of like we have our, we have our ordinary senses. This is such a bad explanation. We have our ordinary senses, and then we have our energy sense. Um, not real, bad explanation. And in that energy sense is, like, condensed down 
like a hundred different other senses. <laughs> sense is the whole idea of it being a sense isn't needed. And we're like, yeah, it's all energy. Um, and it's all energy to us because we're like 3D beings. We're forced to sort of... Perception's 3D. We're not actually 3D beings. Condensed stuff. Um, but in reality, I think it's like a lot of different phenomena. So just as sort of an example, like, you know, the base, most basic example is I'm reading, I'm reading some sort of Zen, Zen literature, Zen text or something. And then I'll read something which I don't understand. And then there'd be sort of like a feeling, there'd be like a felt sense in the thing that it has some sort of presence. Um, and it's like, oh, there's a thing here. Like, this is a thing I can understand. And then I'll kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like this. I got turn my attention inward onto it and then as i the more i turn my attention onto that presence the more i understand the thing and it so i have an ability where i can detect energetic presences and then download them into me and that comes takes a form of like take taking in a bunch of information and that's what i do with these deities it's like turn okay got it now i understand what that is and I can kind of do that to people as well. So, you know, except my partner, Jess, and she's talking about, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm sexist. Um, <laughs> Why would I? That's so mean. <laughs> so it's like uh, talking about how she's not sure why she does different things. Then I can be like, oh, I wonder why she does different things. And then I'll just sort of understand, like, I'll get like a download of like memories, past lives, things that she's done in the past. Um, if I want to, I usually I'm a bit freaked out when that stuff like that happens. But I can I can just do that do that to people. I'm like, oh, thing, oh, that's what that is. As for consent, I make sure that they're you know it's something that they they want my help with. You know, I don't just I don't just fucking. It's hard to control. It's hard to control because a lot of it's just seeing. Like a lot of it's just seeing. But like the actual download thing, like I don't do that unless people ask. Um, and then I'd be like blah blah blah, and it's extremely relevant in particular for them. You know, it's really useful for them. Like if someone needs help with something, then I'd be like, oh, there's like a presence there that I can like tune into to help them with this thing, and then I do that, say whatever comes, and usually it's really helpful. Um, although with Jess, I'm usually like. I just understood a bunch of past lives. That was wild. It's like, ah. <laughs> it's her response. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite strange. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have this kind of like uh, information, maybe information, and I call it energy, energy absorption thing. And in the same way, there are, there are like sort of energetic presences. It's really hard to put into words what this thing is that I do. It's like, it's like everything's an information bank that I can download from. So like, this sort of doll has like a presence. Um, and that's because, well, who knows why? Um, but one way, you know, presences can be built by things. You can kind of like put intentions into things and then they can kind of have this same kind of energy presence. Um, you can get it in art, so like I can look at art. Oh, I understand this art now. Um, and it's very, it's very non-verbal with art usually. It's like you can't really explain what you understood. But there's also like it's like oh, you know, I'm reading the Wikipedia page of a goddess or a god, and it's like whoa, there's something here. <laughs> um, like as you as you sort of feel into the idea of that goddess or a god. It's like, whoa, there's like, there's something going on. You know, there's some presence there. It's really like full body for me when, when I like sense a presence and start downloading, especially like a god or goddess. And I'm like connecting into them. It's like, whoa, like things are changing. Like, let me do, do one of these. It's like, oh, it's like an actual, like it's a goddess that exists. It's generally like the download that I get from that. It's like, oh, it's a goddess that exists. And then from then on, I can kind of recall that, that presence or recall that sort of name in order to access that presence. And then once I access that presence, I can kind of just ask it Alexa. questions. I'm like, hey, oh. what's up? Sorry. Um, 
And they're usually hanging around me, I feel like. I feel like I got a bunch of, uh, like, this this guy. Um, look like I was spinning at the Buddha, which is a good cover. Um, so I'm actually talking about an energetic presence, which is, like, there. And it follows me around. I think it's me a bit of a sashi. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. It's giving me signals about it. Um, so I can connect to the present, like, ask questions. Um, one sort of practice that you can do with sort of these entities, um, if they want to. You know, it's all about what they, you know, they're, like, beings. So, like, I ask them what they want. Um, you can, like, merge energy bodies with them. So you sort of pull them into your heart. And then they sort of fix a bunch of, fix a bunch of little, like, uh, tweaks. They tweak your body around to make it. That's what merging it. You merge, you merge your energy bodies th through the heart. Boom. Now you're connected and then they can do a bunch of stuff to you. Better. It's like, oh, thanks. I didn't realize that I had like a block channel like here. <laughs> One time I was lying in bed. Um, this is sort of the first time I did this energy body merging. So I was just chatting with Ryan, Meta Jedi. He's like the, um, the, the guy who, he does this every day. He like wakes up. I don't know if he, I hope he's okay if he's saying this. Um, if not, unfortunate. Um, he like waked it for a long time. Very experienced with it is what I'm saying. That's what um, I wanted to say. And who knows if that's true? Could have just made that up. Nice camera. <laughs> um, so I just, I just talked with him and he'd been like, oh yeah, you know, what I do is I merge my energy buddy with her. And I was like, okay, that sounds like doable. That was a perfect impression of him. I just want to say like, uh, you guys don't know it. And he he had no, but that was that was excellent. That was really good. Um, I ordered a cat, a lucky cat. Oh, and when I opened it out of the box, so I got it for Christmas. How it's got for me, thanks. Um, and I was like, whoa, this has like a really unique sort of like presence, energetic presence, uh, feel to it, and it was very big, and like different. And I was like, whoa, scared. Um, usually, you know, that's the normal reaction, I think, to something, like, powerful and different. Um, so I sort of put it up on my, uh, she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to be showed right now. Uh, uh, powerful and different, I'm starting to get used to it at this point. Uh, I'm not super scared of it anymore. Uh, sometimes. I put her up on my bookcase, and, um... I didn't realize it was a goddess at the time. I just thought, it, I was like, oh, this is a strange new presence that I'm scared of. I've only been in line for like four months. This all started pretty recently. I like, I'm learning it all as I go. So every time I would like walk by, I would like connect to that presence. And I would just like bow three times. Like knees on the floor, like full, like head, head to the ground. You know, just... I fucking crashed my bike and fucked up both my legs. And I was still doing this. I felt like it was like, I really have to pay respects. Just to, just to make sure that, uh, you know, it just felt right. It just felt right to do. Because it was like, I was, I was like sort of connecting. It felt like I was connecting and being fearful. And it's kind of like a rude thing to do is to be like scared at someone. It's like, it's kind of being, ah, you know, like if someone walked by you in the street, it was like, ah, fucking hell. Like, I gotta run. And then just ran away. It's like, that's not very nice. <laughs> I'm just a guy. Um, and I imagine they feel the same way. So I, you know, full, full, like, head down bows because I was like, I, I'm scared. And I don't want to upset them. And then I, I, um, yeah, I was lying in bed. And, um, she introduced herself. And we got to know each other. Blah, blah, blah. And the, the way that looks like is I kind of get, like, I sense a presence. So I'm like, whoa, presence. It's like something's different in the air and then it's um i get a whole different like qualitative feel of the of the thoughts feelings images coming into my head and then i just sort of follow whatever those are guiding me to so this was like open wikipedia i was like sure open wikipedia you know guide go to like this wikipedia page okay i go to the wikipedia page like click this click this click this click this saraswati is the wikipedia page now she was like that's me and i was like oh cool like yeah um did I just say heck yeah? Do I say that? I think I've ever said that. Was that fuck yeah? So I decided to 
Yeah, so I, I was like, oh, Saraswati seems great. Oh, this is a great. So we, you know, I don't bow three times every time I connect with her now. And I just finished it. So back to the story. I was, I was talking with Ryan, and he was talking about how he, like, murders his energy body. And I was like, oh, I wonder if Saraswati would be interested. So I tried it. And it was really cool because, you know, I sort of have an attentional map of my energy body. I sort of know what's going on um, as far as I know it. I, there's different spots that I know well, and there's different spots that I don't know well. And I sort of, you know, bring my mind across all of these different spots that I know well and try and clear out blocks or, you know, connect things to different things. I'm being really humble. I'm really good with the energy body. But when I sort of merge my energy body with this goddess, Saraswati, um, she, like, I felt a bunch of different shifts, like, you know, like, and, and the way that manifests is like heat, um, tingles, uh, like a muscular jump, it can be a muscular jump sometimes. Um, basically like physical, physical sensations, as well as movements, um, of like energy, I felt energy shifting in a bunch of different places that I didn't even realize were energy channels, and I'm still not really aware of what they are, <laughs> um, but it happened to me. It was like a, and I was like, oh wow, it's like she, by merging energy bodies, she like healed a bunch of different stuff that I wasn't aware of, and this kind of brings me back to the previous thing, which is like, Hold up there first. So like the we, it's like we're merging consciousnesses, like merging energy bodies, merging consciousnesses, and then we're both like, and then she is like in my body basically, like experiencing my body, and she could just fix stuff the same way she would do it with herself, her own energy body. This sort of shift that's happened in sort of my my life, um, I'm just saying there's a shift that happened in, in my life. Then why I'm saying this since becoming enlightened. Um, even though it's probably happening before that, I've like noticed it or sort of keyed into it more and more is like going from experiencing things that I expect to experiencing things that I don't expect. Um, it's like, uh, it, it would be easy for me to dismiss, um, the idea that this was an energetic presence of a other being, um, not super easy, you know, I'm pretty Theoretically, it would be easy, but it's not easy for me. Theoretically, it would be easy. Easier. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting like... I'm just like... I, well, as soon as I said it, I was like... I, whenever I say something wrong, I feel like the presences of entities, like... are like, no, you're misrepresenting us, or like, that's not what, how it is. Like, you're like, not being truthful. Like, and I don't like that. So I'm, I was like, scrambling to correct myself, because I was like, yeah, that's, you're right, that's not right. Like, listening to the... Um, it would be easier, theoretically, to um, believe less if things were happening that fit my expectations. But when they don't fit my expectations, that's really, really hard all of a sudden. It's like, oh, you know, it's really hard to pretend that an energetic, like an energetic presence is a being that knows things I don't and exists when they do things I don't expect. I felt like I had like an hour of like healing on different parts of myself that I didn't even know were there. That's, and then it would be like something really specific to, like a sinus would unblock. I'm gonna get a drink. I'm like, oh fucking hell, my sinus is unblocked. <laughs> That's strange. Um, and in the same way, so that my psychedelic visuals, um, they've gone from like these sort of expected mirror-like visuals that I've had to just, like, wild shit. If I just- if I just stay looking at the same spot for, like, more than a- within 0.5 of a second, I just get com basically completely boomed out by what's even there. Like, at the moment, yeah, it's completely nuts. It's kind of like a- So- oh my god. Sorry. I'm just gonna get distracted if I do that. But the basic, the basic essence of it is that in every, in every light, every bit of light, there's darkness, and in every bit of darkness, there's light. And if you sort of dissolve that distinction between light and darkness, then it's like in that, in that liminal space, which you notice by noticing the darkness in light and the light in darkness, it's able to kind of shift around. And then if you dilate space and time, 
then it starts looking really fucking wild. Jesus Christ. But the way it's... Yeah. Jesus. The way it's manifesting for me recently, uh, just an example, I guess, is sort of like different um, slats of like blurred blocks moving like this across the visual field. Um, and that usually can dissolve into like more complicated things. Even like perspective changes, like I'll go from like being like here, where people normally are, to like here. Um, which is pretty fucking nuts, man. It's a good time. I mean, I, I didn't really spend that much time with it. It's like once you, once I like was able to do that, the main time that it kind of happened was, you know, uh, before bed. You know, I'm lying before bed. It's like, uh, okay. When I close my eyes, I get a nice sort of visual, visual change. Yeah. And it kind of, kind of brings me back to, I took a break, I paused it, and then I started recording again. Um, my parents were like walking outside and I didn't want their audio to like interfere. Um, what I was originally talking about, which is this sort of no, no. So I, I have covered enough context now to bring it back to what I wanted to say originally. Notice how my voice changed. Isn't that interesting how my voice like has completely changed or like changed a lot. Um, and that's just from, I just did like, I'm, like 15 minutes of meditation basically, or 15 minutes, five, five, 10 minutes. And I just sound different now, which was, I sort of had this realization that the present moment is non-conceptual. And then um, I was like, ah, hold up. I haven't detached from this yet. Like, let's detach from this. Because it was a little bit too... It kind of caught me off guard. Because i have been trying to solve my problems for so long. In sort of the same way that you might expect. It's like, okay, yeah. And I know I mentioned this at the start. It's like, I want to I want to solve this problem. Let's figure out what the problem is. Let's evaluate the situation intellectually. And then let's figure out a solution. And it was kind of like... I kind of noticed... It was like psh, 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 psh. all of these times in my life that anything had ever happened. Um, like the stuff that worked <laughs> in order to get something done wasn't conceptual. This is actually a thing that I do all the time to get insight into stuff. It's like, is this true? Okay, if it's true, then it should apply to every single moment in my life. Okay, I'll apply it to every single moment in my life and see where it's true. I did this with like, is the present moment non-conceptual? Evaluated all the moments in my life. And it happens, um, my ability to do this developed after my heart chakra opening, you know, where I went from kind of like being able to make like one connection per thought to now I can make like a hundred thousand connections per thought. Um, so I just be like, whoosh, okay, that's true. Fuck. <laughs> like just doing it. It's like, how does that make any sense? It's like, you just. It's an example of a non-conceptual thing. I think I explained that. No, I just don't think you just do it. Um, it's not conceptual. Um, stuff like you know weird tricks, like oh I go to a cafe or uh, you know I I wake up at a particular time of day. It's like none of this makes any sense. And I kind of noticed like oh wait hold up. It's also always very in the moment. Sorry. You don't you don't solve any of these problems that I'm having intellectually because they you have to solve them in the present moment because the present moment's all there is, and the present moment hold up is like not conceptual at all. It's just not an intellectual construct. It's it's a not intellectual construct. It's not a construct at all. Um, and everyone knows that, right? It's like look around. Everyone does everyone know that? I, I it's like uh mm, I don't know. Does everyone know that? Do you guys know that? I find it really hard to know what's... It's like, it because when you realize something like this, like, the realization is that it's obvious, and it's always been there. Um, it's always been there, and it's always applied to every part of your life, and it's never not been true. Um, it's like, truth is truth. Um... And I feel like everyone does kind of know, like, that their intellectual stories aren't the present moment and aren't the, like, and that the actual present moment is non-conceptual, they're just not noticing it. 
How is that what you're thinking? It's not. So, I, I got a bit attached to that because I was like, damn, this is really useful. <laughs> I'm like not wasting brain power on conceptualizing the present moment and then trying to figure out solutions. I'm just, uh, uh, you know, the present moment is just kind of happening in its non-conceptual way, the same way it always was. It's like, that's a lot of spare energy. Um, when you realize something true, you don't, you lose a bunch of delusions and delusions take up energy that I now have available to use. So I did my Miyamoto Musashi, attain a principle, detach from it. Detachment, which, uh, in terms of you know material world, like what that looks like is I just close my eyes, <laughs> I like, whoosh, I get an energetic feeling of something. Um, it's almost like being sliced up into like one hundred billion pieces, and then as soon as it slices into hundred billion pieces, it disperses. That's what it feels like to me. Um, and if you want to like do it slowly, let's say like a slower version, which you could then scale up to like a hundred billion, it's like um, you look at something, and then you look at how you don't need to attach to it, and then that kind of splits it up into two. It's like oh, I don't need to attach to it here. Maybe I need to attach to it here, and you split it up again. It's like oh, yeah, I really don't need to attach to it, and then you just like um, and it's just wow, well, it's gone. And it happens very fast. And then I was like, wait a minute. Aren't space and time like the same thing? I'm literally just narrating my experience of like after I detached from it, all of a sudden I was like, huh? I was like, wait a minute, time. This makes no goddamn sense. First of all, I was like, wait a minute, time. This makes no goddamn sense. It's like, the present moment is all there is. It's not conceptual. How does time work? Okay, I can probably detach from time now. And I was like, shush, 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 gone. And I was like, wait a minute, space and time, they're like the same thing. Shush, shush, shush. I haven't detached from space and time yet. Shush, ah. Um. And now... You know, you're, you're going to be amazed at how all of this was leading up to this small thing that I wanted to say. You know, my visual field is uh, a lot more impressive. <laughs> and I've, yeah, lost the sense of scale, like I was saying. It's like, like how big are things? I can't tell anymore. Um, I can kind of tell. Like, this is, this is bigger. No! <laughs> this is bigger, right? I can't tell anymore. I have to just, like, guess. Or, you know, go. Surely I can tell. You can't tell anymore. I just can't tell anymore. That's so weird. Go, go intellectually or something. Um, I can't believe I got it wrong. That's so embarrassing. Um, yeah. So that has been a lot of fun recently. And it's given you a nice little bit of context for sort of how my, how my life is. I kind of wake up. Um, I'm usually in some new energetic space, which I haven't been in before. So now I'm kind of shifting into what my day is like, just to give you some... Because in the pre during the night... So the nighttime for me is pretty complicated. Um, there's a few different modes that I could enter in bed. One mode is I just put on some music um, through my speakers using that laptop. Thanks, George. Um, and... I lie in bed. Usually I wrap myself up in this blanket. I look kind of nice, actually. I just want to say, kind of sexually attractive. Just horny. I should just play it. There's something about being able to adjust the blanket on the fly in order to adopt a posture, which is appropriate for what's happening. And what's happening is slipping into a hypnagogic state. So I can usually find, you know, I, I, I adjust my posture using the blanket so that I'm prepared to enter a hypnagogic state while there's music playing. And so I'm just explaining, you know, it's like I have a few different ways before I, of stuff that I do in bed. And this is one of the things I do in bed where I'm kind of sleeping. 
and just enter a hypnagogic state, which is in between asleep and awake. And I do that by getting a certain posture with the blanket and playing some music. And I kind of slip into this sort of semi-conscious, unconscious state, which is a so it's it's a resolution state. It's like working through things. It's it's thinking through things. If you could. Did I say a resolution state? That's so cool. A resolution state, a state where you get resolutions. That's such a good fucking- I didn't even notice I said that. That's so good. A resolution state, I'd say. A resolution state, it's like working through things. It's, it's thinking through things, you could say. And... So, so, I'll just give an example. It's, it's kind of like if you're dreaming, but it's happening really fast. <laughs> And you don't need all the dream stuff to do it. So you're getting- I'm just trying to explain what it's like. It's really hard to explain what it's like. It's like a really fast dream. I, it's exactly the same explanation. You know in like dreams you're like experiencing linear time? It's like you're dreaming but you're not experiencing linear time. You're getting like a bunch of non-conceptual sort of um, processing of things in a strange subconscious way where you're sort of like being put through a bunch of different situations. Um, and when I sort of become conscious in those situations, like I become fully conscious and not just semi-conscious. Um, when I'm semi-conscious, I can know that I'm working through uh, ideas or problems. Know that it's a resolution state. Um, and when I'm fully conscious, I kind of can see what's actually happening. And what's actually happening visually is there's like a four-dimensional rainbow golden orb, like floating here that represents 10 different things in my life. And there's one here, and they're just like merging. That was what happened once when I when I sort of uh, came back into it. Another time I... And when they merge, it's like, whoa, like I... Like a bunch of things that weren't resolved have been resolved now, and I just feel better. Um, I was doing something similar, and I sort of became conscious. And I became conscious like into an alien's body, is what it uh, was like, and I was like, whoa. Like, I'm an alien right now. Like, and then I grabbed a mirror, and it just looked completely fucked. And I, like, freaked out. And then I, like, came back into my body. I was like, whoa. The entities that I connect with, they, like, they're, like, <laughs> interdimensional. They're not, they're not, like, 3D. So it was really fucked when I saw them in the mirror. I don't know how to explain it. And I got, like, a, um, felt like a presence, you know, and I got through the, the same way that I would hear, like, the goddess speak. I got, like, you were meant to be conscious there, buddy. <laughs> Uh, I was like, ah, whoops. Um, so that's one way of like sleeping. That's sort of what I do. Uh, I, I'll have a call with my partner or I'll have a call with someone. I'll do an energy session with someone. Um, and it's like, okay, that was a lot of fucking work. I need, I need some time to rejuvenate, recover. Um, I'll just take a two hour nap, which is then sort of entering this strange, like 10 dimensional space where there's orbs representing hundreds of different things, doing weird shit in order to sort of like put myself into a better state when I wake up and then I wake up and I'm like, oh, I feel great. Just giving you like how my day goes, do energy session or talk with someone, feel fucked, like resolution state that's hypnagogic, wake up, feel good. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't need to know what happened. <laughs> I don't need to be conscious of it. Um, I don't need to remember any of it. Uh, this is just my feeling about these kind of states. It's like, it doesn't really work if you're a conscious, like, thinking in thoughts kind of mode. Uh, it does the job. And uh, yeah, sort of sort of up until about two months ago, I wouldn't really dream. Dreaming wasn't a thing that was part of my sort of spiritual path. Dreaming wasn't a resolution state for me. Uh, it was just like, ah, oh, fucking weird dreams. Like, remember them once every year or a few months, um, if they're particularly strange. Uh, but I was like, no, I want to sort of be more intentional about this. I want to make my dream sort of more, more mm, useful, more, more like getting things done, more like rejuvenating. I don't want to, and I want, because a lot of people, when I, when I talk to sort of, especially female practitioners, um, don't ask me why every woman who's into spirituality, even tangentially can lose a dream. It's a fact. Name one, name one that can't, you can't literally name one woman who's spiritual, who can't lose a dream and doesn't use dreaming as part of her life and like interfaces with it in a meaningful way like name one literally name one you can't um and i was like oh damn it's like 
my female friends that are doing lucid dreaming every night um, seem to be getting a lot out of like interpreting and understanding and you know using sort of interfacing with the dreams as, uh, as almost like a living thing which changes all the time this reminds me um sorry to interrupt myself and sorry to the audience for interrupting myself it's it's i was chatting with someone and they said that like they the way that they got into the whole spiritual thing was they met an entity in a dream who just like bah, like enlightened them and it's like oh that's wild i wonder if that's what's maybe that's how every lucid dreamer type practitioner gets into it interesting and that's sort of a type of shift which i've noticed is um really good it's like treating things as as a living thing so it's like oh you know this is a um instead of uh you know going into a dream as as a sort of like oh it's going to be the same thing all the time it's like oh no it might change it might be a new thing what i'm saying is that there is a shift you can do to things where they become resolution states rather than like whatever else they were so i started sort of being more intentional it's like okay i want i want dreams to be i was doing magic like i said before um you know really thinking through my heart what i want so I, boom um and now when i when i sleep it feels like i'm like sometimes sometimes i can wake up and there'd be like a whole energetic thing happening. Like one time I was, um, I was just lying in bed and I was having a dream where I was in a hotel room with a woman. And then we were kind of just like chatting and then it switched to sort of like getting in bed. I lost my virginity in a hotel room. Um, she started like kissing me and it felt so real. And I was like, too real. Never experienced this before. Analysis mode engaged. <laughs> and I like woke up. And as I came out of the um as I came out of the dream, I still had like the feeling on my like lips of this like extremely like like it was like it actually happened sort of feeling on my on my lips. I was like, whoa. It was so real. It was so real. And then my my sort of entire crutch, my dick my balls <laughs> sorry I, I thought i just be because of fun uh my genitals my genitals and and also my hips so it was like a it was like a it was like okay dicks here it was like a like that up to my hips like that and the hips are sort of usually where i sort of experience a lot of fear it's like if i experience fear it's in the hips that's sort of my thing um and it was like it was all it was all connected in a very like solid way that I'd never experienced before. It was kind of like it was like a, there was like a um system like being installed into my like dick and hips. Um my cock, my my penis. And I was like, whoa, you know. I was just kind of like slipping off into dreamscape. And now I'm getting an energetic system installed on my on my dick and hips. It's strange. Um, and at first, it, my reaction was like, okay, how can I... You know, I tried just moving my head. It, it, I'm not sure how sexual this really was. It felt like that was... The sexuality was like a way to interface in. But it wasn't the main event. Like, the main event was sort of this hip, hip to dick connection. And the hips primarily. Yeah. Like, okay, I can move my head and it's still there. So my experience before... I had an experience before when I was dreaming where I sort of became conscious um, while I was dreaming that I was dreaming and then slipped into like a my body was asleep but my mind was awake and in the body was asleep but my mind was awake um, I noticed that my whole energetic system was active at once so typically there's sort of insensitivities and the sensitivities so as you like consciously move through the world, it's like different things become more or less active based on what's required and you know, like your attention and like whatever you're doing. You know, if you're like, uh, if you're loving, the heart chakra is more active, for example. And if you're ignoring some weird sex stuff, then the shadow chakra is active or ignored or numb, I guess you could say. The different parts are numb, different parts are active. Um...
But when I was when I woke up into this semi conscious state, it was all active at once. And I was like, oh shit, like this is amazing. This is like a really good. Is this what happens when you sleep all the time? And I still don't know if that's what's happened when you sleep all the times. Um, but it was happening. It was happening then. And I was like, okay. And then as soon as I moved, boosh, like it was all gone. I was like, ah, fuck. It's like I should have just stayed still. So when I came into this thing with this, um, I just want to say, uh, what yeah, uh, happened really times. <laughs> It's like Andy from Parks and Rec. I'm going to say alien. So before I went to bed, I got like this flash. Extraterrestrials don't use the slur word. Of like a insectoid sort of alien entity. Extra um, extraterrestrial entity. Sorry, sorry. A word. No, no. Which I've had experience with before. And then woman in the hotel room. And then... As I sort of like went, came back into the, uh, you know, the feeling of the hips and the dick, I was like, like, what was that? And I got like another flash of like an insectoid entity, like visually. Um, and I was like, oh, it's, what are you guys? Um, it's one of you guys. So I was like, okay, I'll try moving my head just to see if I can. And like, it, it still stays the same. I was driving my head and I was like, oh, like I am, I can be like conscious and awake and moving and this thing's still active. That's really interesting. Um, and I was like, I don't really know what this is. So I'm not sure if I want to keep it. It like feels, it feels like really different to normal. It feels really solid. It feels really like, um, like a, like a, like, yeah, like a metal thing is being installed into my body. So I was like, okay, I'll try moving my legs. Um, and when I moved my legs, it got weaker. And then eventually faded away. Um, so that's the kind of thing that happens when I sleep. It's like, sleep's kind of a 50-50. Am I going to have a bunch of dreams, which are really relevant to my life and useful and interesting? Uh, and like work through a bunch of stuff? Or am I going to have some extremely bizarre experience, which I have difficulty explaining or understanding or any of that stuff? Um... I have no idea what I was talking about, Steve. Oh yeah, I was explaining my life. So yeah, I, I wake up, <laughs> either something bizarre has happened, or I process a bunch of stuff and I feel rejuvenated. And usually I'm affected in some way by, you know, the recent realizations, like space times collapse, collapse, like, so I have like a more smooth sort of existence in general. I'm like, there's a whole different feel to my perception after every single shift, and they happen like three to ten times per day. So like when I'm waking up the next day, it's usually different to every other day. And it's like, huh, and usually it's kind of smoother. Oh, yeah, you know, this is nice. Um, I usually get annoyed. I'm like, oh, I want, don't want to go on social media. And then I either go on social media and be annoyed at myself for doing it. Or lie in bed and don't go on it, but still be kind of annoyed. Um, and then my day is basically wake up, eventually go on social media, uh, respond to DMs. Um, if I'm feeling it, write some tweets, check notifications, see what people have said. Like, like, like. Eventually I have a call scheduled with someone go into the call with them and you know i do sort of like a you know paid sessions and also like hey let's just chat and we we're talking about before it's like whoosh it's like i can just sort of understand a bunch of things about people and it's not really something that i can even control anymore it's like as soon as i see someone now it's like on site i'm understanding sort of exactly the way that they're functioning how they are why they're doing the things they are um there's just like so much there's so much stillness in me and also so much uh sort of like n non <laughs> it's like the more that you clear out your own stuff and sort of concepts about things um the more accurate your mirror of the other person becomes so i like understand a bunch of things about them so when i talk to people it's i it's like i'm a like my consciousness kind of mirrors their consciousness and i can kind of see how it's all like formed and like the way they are the way they are and it's just like 
that's just what happens when I look at people. Um, I just kind of know what's going on with them. Not like memories and stuff, but you know, the way they are, why they are that way, how they're going to act, like why they're coming from different places. And I notice a bunch of different things which I can kind of like um, talk about or help them with or, you know, sort of work on. It's like, oh, you know, they have some weird block here. Like they're not seeing, this is a blind spot for them. It's like, how can I work that into the conversation? Yeah, if you, if you chat with me, then I'm I'm always talking to the thing that I'm seeing, which is like how what's going on with you, um, and you know, usually usually it's like one to one with what are we talking about, but sometimes not, you know, and it's like the kind of natural mm, posture for me is like if I'm noticing, like the more I notice something, the more I put my attention on something, the more it kind of like aligns with where people want it to be uh, so that's what i'm talking about so we have a chat i eventually sort of uh benefit them in some way in these ways that i've noticed because i see what's going on and have some understanding of like what would be better um and the way that that manifests so it's like you know with with like no thoughts and present moments non-conceptual there's never like any like think 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 speak 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 it's like, speak, 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 speak. Don't know what I'm saying the whole time. This whole time I haven't known what I'm saying. Um, I can, like, recall it if I want to. But that's something which I do. I would have to, you know, it's like a, it's like an after thing. I'm like, okay, I'll recall this thing. And then that's useful for some reason. Um, so I'll just say, I'll just say stuff. And that stuff will end up being, you know, relevant or useful to them. Because I'm sort of just sort of speaking, it's almost like I'm channeling like whatever I'm feeling or seeing or experiencing at the time when I'm chatting to them. Um, so, you know, we talked about it before, it's like I notice a presence, like download information about it, and then I'll like get a bunch of images or whatever, and I, or like things that to say, and I'll just say them. It's like, it's all very non-conceptual. I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And that usually ends up being extremely useful. So I benefit someone. Um, then I usually have a call with my partner, Jess. We have a chat. And, you know, during that call is usually when I start getting my first sort of, like, big enlightenment shifts of the day. It's like, oh, you know, things are changing, things are collapsing. Um, you know, different ideas that I had about the world are different now. <laughs> and we have nice chats, you know, we're talking about, like, different ideas. Um, and things about the world and figuring them out and really, like, tuning them. And also just chatting about our days, of course. Yeah. Like, what are you even up today? Well... Fucked an alien space time collapsed. She's like, yeah. And I meditated for three hours. I'm like, that's great. Um, she's great. I like to keep it brief. It's like, <laughs> we've we kind of got to the point now where it's like, I, I, I mean, I've been used to this stuff for seven years. I've been going through like big spiritual shifts every day, multiple times per day for like seven years. And I think she's, she's been hearing about it now for like four months. It's like, I can kind of just sort of, yeah, I had some enlightenment stuff. <laughs> it's just like, you know, like the fucking businessman coming home from his dead work. Yeah, you know, business stuff happened. Um, but I try, I try to remember it and explain it a bit more, but it's just tough. It's like, it's just so much going on for me. Uh, but usually if it like happens on the call, I'll, I'll explain what, I, what what's changed and we have fun with that. But I get more in detail sometimes. It's like the problem, problem with me is it's like, usually I, I detach from it so quickly that I don't even bother conceptualizing it um, so that I can explain it to someone else. It's like, I'll go through some huge thing. I'm like, ah, detached. Um, and then I kind of forget about it, but everything's different. And that's sort of the main, that's the main tell that I have that something huge has happened. It's like, I either close my eyes and open my eyes. Yeah, I usually close my eyes and open my eyes. And it's like, everything's different now. Like everything's become ultra 4K HD. Um, like, yeah, like the distance is different. Uh, you know, something something dramatic has changed. Uh, it's quite nice. We've sort of developed a system. Um, me and me and Jess, where I'll, you know, if I sort of close my eyes, she knows that I'm going through some extremely sort of uh, huge thing, and she's like, "Okay, I just won't talk." <laughs> like, I'll thank us. You're saying, you know, she used to have to do it all the time. Now she only does it some of the time. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's nice. It's like you don't have to, like, force yourself to be silent. Um, just because I'm going through some enlightenment thing. 
And it's kind of an interesting um mentioning that it kind of brings up like an interesting thing where like I try to it's like I'm always going through all this wild shit. It's like yeah, you know, um experiencing like an energetic storm uh and like everything's undulating and I'm getting psychedelic visuals and you know, I just sort of collapse this like sense of self. And then it's like, okay, have to also have to also function in society, be a normal person. Um you know, it's like I don't want to be rude. <laughs> so there's kind of like this this part of me as well, which is like always sort of a it's finding a nice medium point between um a socially socially acceptable thing, which is like closing your eyes for a little bit. And, you know, a socially unacceptable thing, which is like passing out and going through a bunch of stuff and then like leaving the call. So I always try to stay on the call when stuff like that happens if I'm chatting with someone on like video call. And I try to try to keep the conversation going after I come out of the thing. <laughs> so usually I'm like, whoa, give me a sec. Um, and it's kind of, that's like a lot of my life. It's like, how can I maintain my existence in sort of the social fabric while also um, doing this with my whole experience all the time? It's pretty hard. Um, but I manage it. I manage it. It is hard. I'm so exhausted all the time. I'm glad I found this hypnagogic rejuvenation thing, like, so I can actually, you know, like, get some, get some, you know, not be exhausted all the time. Uh, I can pretty take more time off, but it's like, when I take time off, like, what am I going to do? I just kind of want to do this kind of stuff. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's going to happen to me anyway, I don't know. And then by managing that, it's like, okay, I need to take two hours. Uh, then I go take my, like, two-hour nap after chatting with Jess. Um... And my two-hour nap is, like I said before, it's like processing a bunch of stuff, strange four-dimensional realm, orbs, um, by putting music on and curling up in an interesting position in my blanket. And then after that, I'm like, okay, I feel ready to do something else. And then usually that's when I sort of start coming up with um, nice things to write or uh, maybe more, more, more enlightenment experiences will happen. So like, usually a bunch of them happen on like the dress call. It'd be cool for like two or three hours. Um, and I usually, I usually live tweet it. Like I'm like, oh, I thought of this thing. Blah, 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 blah. You know, questions are um, uh, tuning in to the signal that reality is always propagating. Blah 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 blah. Beep. It's an example of something I realize. Um. And then if I'm feeling really nice, if I'm like, you know what, I I feel exhausted, you know, I've just spent the whole day going through a bunch of extremely difficult enlightenment things and also like putting all of my attention and effort on like benefiting people that I'm talking to, who are paying me or not paying me, <laughs> um, you know, I'll watch a movie or something. And then I'll watch a movie or something. Or... Uh, yeah, I'll just sort of uh, go through my stuff. Maybe go for a little walk, walk around. Maybe go and get some uh, fast food, some Subway. Get a, like, a nice sugary drink. Uh, and then, I've actually got, like, a um, half a month left of a PhD in artificial intelligence that I'm finishing up. So I want a Pepsi so bad. So I work for, like, two hours on that. It's pretty difficult. Um... Because I haven't really, I haven't really been interfacing with the PhD. Like I, the last like four months have been like this roller coaster of enlightenment, where I went from like normie basically, well normie. I was going through spatial experiences every day, but I wasn't like I was like second path, not third path, fourth path. There's four paths. Fourth path is enlightenment, and third path, fourth path is where it gets wild. So I had like fourth path, uh, third path, like four or five months ago. And then fourth path enlightenment, like two months later. <laughs> and that's been like a true fucking roller coaster, because it's like before that it was like no no love. I didn't have any love in my life, had no heart chakra opening. So I didn't even know how to love things. No like non conceptual. Uh I was all in concepts, all intellectual, all stories. Um What else? Not but I'd go for walks and then I'd like dip out of it for like a second, but that would be that would be all. Um, 
you know, no no awareness of entities, goddesses, anything like that. We have no idea what those are. Um, I would do like energetic connection stuff, and I'd notice like a weird energy on things, but I wouldn't understand that it would be a goddess or like an entity or an actual entity you could interact with. Didn't realize I could interact with them. Um, you know, no magic. We wouldn't have any magic. Uh, and no like um, unexpected events, really. It's like most things were kind of in the parameters of my expectations. I I was really used to these reality shifts at that point. So they were kind of expected. <laughs> And that's because, you know, I wasn't I wasn't in Leiden yet. I was still sort of operating in a thought realm where normal, normal things had to happen all the time. Um that's sort of the default the default state is like normal things have to happen all the time. Everything that happens is a normal thing. Um And then boom, like four months of uh that. And now like this last month I'm like, wait, gotta finish my PhD. Uh so it's like I usually spend like two hours like switching between Twitter and my PhD. I get like this much done, but it's enough. Um, and then I usually go to sleep. I'm already talked about what sleep's like. So that's kind of my life. It's like this constant roller coaster of sort of interacting with different entities and people, um, understanding a bunch of things. Um, intentionally or unintentionally, uh, just by looking at them, or by like, oh, they have a problem, I'll solve it. Um, chatting with Jess, a lot of chatting with Jess, and lots of enlightenment experiences. And that's what you see today. You know, it's this, uh, it's a guy who's going through a bunch of stuff all the time, and then talking about it on Twitter and talking about it on this podcast. And if you enjoyed this podcast, then uh, leave a like down below. <laughs> Please let me know. It's the first time I'm trying something like this. And I'm thinking I'm going to try and do it solo. Because it's like, ah, well, you know. If you can do it good solo, you don't need guests. But it'd be nice to get guests. I'm thinking about getting some of my Latin friends as guests. I feel like that would be really useful. Um, if I last my... Yeah. That's sort of the plan. It's like, solo podcast, solo podcast, solo podcast, solo podcast. Oh, one of my Latin friends is free. Let's do a podcast together. Uh, I might ask Rosa. Did ask Rosa, she confirmed. If if she doesn't show up in the next, like, year, I didn't ask her, don't worry about it. Uh, she did. Um, yeah. Yeah, let me know if you liked it. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts. Although, not, not too many thoughts. You know, let's keep it, let's keep it civil. Um, yeah, I appreciate you watching, it was really nice. This is the first episode, so, you know, first time I hit record. Second time, if you count the first time. If, you, if, you, if you're not counting the time that I hit record, and was like, this is a podcast. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, you can't just say, they know it's a podcast. That's the only other time I recorded, so. You know. Whoops, I said at the start of this, f figuring out sort of if this is a, you know, get, I'll be getting better at it over time is what I'm saying. It's my first time doing it. And you may notice, you know, the end is better than the not end beginning. How did how did you guys feel? Do you guys feel like the end is better than the beginning? Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone. See you again next week. I'm trying to do it every Wednesday. Record it on Sunday. Don't tell anyone. That's a secret. Hello, welcome. It restarted. It restarted. Yeah, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like, um, I think that this is a nice format. It's like I can ramble and then actually explain what the fuck's happening. It's nice. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys. I'll see you around. Peace.